What's up people and welcome to the fourth part of my introduction to distributed systems tutorial. So in the previous videos we had a look at an example of a distributed system where we have this shared data set across multiple nodes. And as you can imagine, when you do this kind of asynchronous communication, you would have some problems with message ordering and uh, data consistency because of the asynchronous nature of network communication. And by that, in order to illustrate that, I have made this really simple example here where I have three different processes. So here we have P1, P2, and P3. And the way you would imagine this is that there are different nodes or uh, processes that are communicating over an asynchronous uh, channel. An important aspect here is to note that also that when you have these distributed settings, there is no way of having the same concept of time between these different nodes. And by that I mean that you know humans we have a way of seeing time like you know it's like two in the afternoon right here and uh, of course you can have uh, algorithms for clock synchronization and stuff but there is no way that you can always be a hundred percent sure that they will have the exact same thing because you know you have clock drift and uh, clock skew which you can google if you're interested in that topic so instead what we have to do is we have to create logical clocks and logical time instead of uh, real-world clocks. So if we take a step back and see what the actual problem of this is, uh, we see that P1 here, it creates a message at this time. It sends this message to P2 and P3. Here you can see P2, it uh, receives the message at this given time. And then at a later stage, it creates a message of its own that it sends to P1 and P3. And now comes the interesting part here. Because of the asynchronous nature of network communication, you can see that the messages are not received in the same order that they were created in. And these uh, messages, they are, they are received in a different order in P3 than they are uh, received in P2. And this is a problem because so you would like to have the same order called total ordering between the nodes saying that you know what if uh, if some process believes that one message was created before another then all processes should also believe that so they, should, they should have the same concept of the happened before relation and this happened before relation can be is, is an example of a logical clock and it's uh, called the Lamport uh, clocks or Lamport timestamps. And uh, they were invented by a guy, guy called Leslie Lamport. And uh, you can read more about this in this paper. I will post it in the description later so you can check it out. But like Leslie Lamport, he is uh, pretty much the godfather of uh, distributed systems. So check out the kind of work that he's been working on and it will be pretty good covered on some like happened before an event ordering. All right. so. Um, so let's see what happens here. So P2 has the notion that message 1 was created before message 2 in the system, while this node uh, doesn't have that. So uh, in order to simplify this a little bit, I have another picture here that it is the same picture, but what I have done is I have numbered the, uh, the messages instead. All right, so, so Lamport timestamp uh, they work like this. So basically first all processes, they initialize their local clock to uh, zero. And the clock here is just a counter that is going to keep track of how many messages it received uh, and how many created itself. So everybody starts at zero. So here P1, it, it uh, increments its counter by one. So now the local clock of P1 is equal to one. And then it adds that to the message and it sends it to the other nodes, right? So you can see here there's a one attached to this message. At P2, whenever you receive a message, you take the max of the received message clock and your local clock. And at this point, P2 has uh, the local clock set to zero because it, you know, it hasn't sent or received any messages yet. So the max of one and zero is of course one. So now P2 updates its local clock to one. At a later stage, it decides to create another message. So now it increments its local clock. So now the local clock of P2 is equal to two. And then it attaches it to the messages and it sends it. So now is the inter interesting part here at P3. So 
P3 receives message 2 before it receives message 1. So now you can see that if instead we would take these messages and then we would sort them, uh, we would get the same order as P2 will get. And uh, it first it takes, when it receives this message, it takes the max of the local clock, which is 0 at this point, and 2, so now it's going to update its local clock to 2, and then it receives the next message, it's going to take the max of its local clock, which is 2, and 1 of the received message, so it's still 2. So it doesn't update its local clock. So here, P3 decides to send a message, it uh, increments its counter by 1, so now the local clock is 3, it sends the message, message 3, to P2 and P1. And this is uh, basically how Lamport time stamps uh, work. And there is an implication of this because it implies that if two messages are causally related, the the message that uh, hap the message that was created will have a higher timestamp than the one that causally preceded. Basically, a little bit more formally, if P implies Q, then Q will have a higher timestamp. But this is a bit mind-boggling the first time before you wrap around this, your head around this. The reverse is not true. So basically, just because some messages have a higher timestamp than some other, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was created before. It could have been created before, but it could also have a higher timestamp because of other reasons. For example, if you created a lot of messages and then send it, and uh, they were done in parallel, and if two processes do this, before they receive, they can be concurrent, and uh, then one might have a higher, higher time stamp than another no, but it doesn't really cautiously proceed it. So take your time to uh, to wrap your head around this, why the reverse is not true. Basically another way of saying this is, is, uh, is like this, that every time it rains, it will become wet on the ground. That is always true. But just because it is wet on the ground, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was uh, because it was raining. Because, you know, it can be wet on the ground for other reasons. And the same is true here if you get the, the image of that, basically. So, there is another thing that I'm, I'm not going to dive into why this is or, like, exactly how this works. I'm just going to say, state it as a fact, and I, I suggest you read up on this. There is a thing called total ordering, which means that if some process here for example, P1, believes uh, that the message was, was delivered in a given order, then all processes also believe on the exact same ordering. Basically, that the, there is a total ordering between the messages, so that when they are delivered to the application, they all deliver them in the exact same order. This is called total ordering. And you can achieve total ordering with Lamport timestamps if you also attach your process ID together with the uh, messages, because uh, if messages are created in concurrent, they could have the same, um, they could have the same um, counter. And uh, if you attach your process ID to them, and then sort by the process ID, assuming that the process ID is unique, then you would have total ordering. So also take, take your time to think about that. There is a, a situation where uh, where you cannot know if some process... You, know, you remember we say that just because some messages have a higher time stamp doesn't necessarily mean that it was created before. If this is something that you need in your system, you need to know that if it has a lower timestamp than it was created before and the etc. So like it goes both ways. Then you could use something called vector clocks, which I'm not going to touch on uh, this video, but just stating in there that the solution to this is vector clocks. In the, in the implementation, we're going to use Lampert uh, timestamps with total ordering, so we're going to attach the process ID to the message. Alright, so I hope that wasn't too confusing for you guys, and I suggest you also take a look at the book, take a look at the paper. Uh, also, I suggest like Wikipedia is also a good uh, place to, uh, to check out, I guess, and complement the material and try to wrap your head around this, and uh, then I will, hopefully, I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye-bye.